Creepy House, Chapter 10 The three turned to face the tunnel. No one saying a word. They just waited for whatever was going to come through. Slowly and silently, from out of the blackness of the tunnel, it emerged into the yellow of the gold mine. It was a small figure about a metre high. It had a huge round head, which was out of proportion with its thin, spindly body. Its eyes were round and milky-like. It wore rags, which were just about hanging on. And then it opened its big mouth. What are you doing in my mine? He screeched at them, revealing cracked and brown teeth. You are dead, he said, and began to move towards them. The boys panicked. There was nowhere to go. They just stood and waited to see what was going to happen. He got closer and closer and stepped right up to within a metre of them. And then dissolved and disappeared. And as soon as that happened, all the miners around them dissolved and disappeared too. The sounds of the hammering and tinkering diminished. The boys were left in a mine in the darkness. Edgy quickly grabbed for his phone and switched on the torch. When they looked around, they realised that they were back in exactly the same cave as when they'd started. He swept the beam up, the platform with the ladder, and right at the top, there was the yellow light which came through from the workshop which had come down earlier. How is this possible, boys? How on earth could we go through a mine and end up back in the same place? Spike said, I don't care, let's get out of here and never ever come back, he said. And they all scrambled up the ladder and up into the workshop. And then they entered the house again.